Hey buddy, Crow back again. And as you can see in front of you, I have an Atari VCS, the new one, not the old one, the 800 series Onyx bundle. Now, before I begin, I wanna mention that I'm gonna ramble on for a while here before I actually get to the unboxing. So check the chapter markings in the video if you just wanna skip to the unboxing. Now, I was never really planning on getting one of these. When this thing was originally announced and funded on Indiegogo, I'd follow it, trying to figure out what the purpose of this thing was. Or in other words, what can this thing do that I can't already do with another device that I owned? Also, when this was being crowdfunded, I didn't have any confidence at all that this thing would actually be released. So I was actually quite surprised when people actually started getting theirs. Ever since that crowdfunding campaign, I would always try to figure out what is the appeal of this thing, other than having the word Atari on it. And I also thought the price of this was just far outside the range of something I'd buy for curiosity. I mean, I think the smallest bundle you could buy retailed for $299, and this bundle was $399. So there was no way I was gonna spend that money on something that I wasn't 100% sure I was gonna use for any reason. Well, on April 20th, I was kind of uh, fumbling around Discord and I wandered into uh, one of the Atari VCS channels on a server that I usually visit and somebody had posted, hey, this bundle is up on GameStop for $99. I was like, $99? It's $300 off? I'd buy that for $99. So I was already on my computer. I went to the link and I could not find it. I would type in Atari. A different bundle would pop up. I type in Atari 800, Atari VCS. This particular bundle would not show up. So I was like, okay, let me try on my phone. So I had the GameStop app on my phone, started searching for it. Atari didn't show up. Atari VCS didn't show up. Atari VCS 800, oh, now this showed up. And it showed up for $99. And I'm thinking to myself, well, surely it's not gonna let me check out. I went through the whole process, I uh, got free shipping, it actually came in two days. So I'm actually kind of shocked I did get this thing for $99. And honestly, for $99, I'm willing to take a gamble on this and hook it up and see exactly what is the appeal of this thing. And as you know, by the dates I've been mentioning, I ordered this on 420, I got this on 422. And as I'm recording this, I don't know when this video is gonna go up, but I'm recording this on May 1st. It's taken me almost a week and a half to even open this thing. So this will be kind of like an unboxing. And then I'll hook this thing up and I'll kind of record myself going through this thing for the first time to see if I can find what the appeal is. All right, so it's still in the bag. Basically, this was in a box. I just um, <laughs> opened up the box, pulled this out, and threw it aside. And that's how it's been sitting for a while. So let's finally open this up. Um, now, the, the joystick... That was wrapped by itself very, very, very nicely. But before let's, we open this up, let's take a look and see. Let's try and get the centered on the camera here because I'm kind of got this in a different uh, <laughs> setup that I normally do. But this is actually setup might work out pretty good in the future. But here we go, Atari VCS, video computer system, gaming, PC, streaming, 800 Onyx bundle. I, now, before I forget to mention that this does come with eight gigs of RAM. And I know it's upgradable to 32 gigs of RAM. And if I were to upgrade this from 8 gigs to 32 gigs, it would be around $100 or $120, which would actually be more than what I paid for this. But I don't know if this would actually be necessary. We'll see if I run it in any... Maybe it's, if you're using this as a PC, you might need to do that. But I don't know. But let's see. On the side, we got the Atari logo with asteroids on the side here. On the side here, it looks like we've got... Um, like a close-up the console, the joystick, and the analog joystick. I already know what the classic joystick feels like, but I was always curious how this regular modern controller felt. On the back here, let's see here, an icon reimagined Atari returns to the living room with the Atari VCS, a completely modern gaming and video computer system, blending the best of consoles and PCs to delight a whole new generation of gamers and creators. Well, I'm not the whole new generation, so I wonder if there's anybody in the new generation. Is there any millennial or Zoomer that really wanted this thing? I'm sure there are, but everybody that I know that has bought this thing has been around my age. <laughs> and I know this comes with Atari Vault. I don't know how many Atari games are in here, so I'm getting games with this. So that might be worth it alone, too. So it's got the AMD Ryzen processor, customizable experience. Compatible with most PC peripherals, uh, power A, oh, okay, so 
they're a third party. They do a lot of the Nintendo Switch controllers. So it's a Power A controller, okay? Kingston Memory, okay. All right, so let's get this open. I know we've got some tape on the sides here. Which side do we open up? That's the, that's the question. I'm going to open up this side. All right. All right. Flip this open. Looks like we got some boxes. Everything is boxed up individually. This is our one controller. <laughs> and this has got to be the console itself. It has to be. And then this must be another controller. Huh, I don't know if you can tell which controller is which. <laughs> oh, these boxes, okay, they're, they're, they're interesting. I like how you, they, they show asteroids on this, I really do. So, uh, yeah, if there's anything from what I learned from the unboxing the joystick, this was really well packaged, um, like aesthetically. <laughs> Let's open up. Let's open up the controllers first. I'm just more curious about that at the moment. Get them out of the way. Oh, this is. Well, I don't know. I guess they use the same box for both controllers, which is why they look the same. Ah, this is the modern controller. This must be the. Um, come on. There you go. Yeah, the joystick. So they're using the same box for both of these, just that the packing material on the inside is. The same. Now I already unboxed. Man, I, you know that controller video I made. I don't know if that was an unboxing or not. I think it was, but um, yeah. So we got the cable. We got uh, the joystick. So I'll just do that one first because I've done this one already. I know what this is like. So now I have two of these things. <laughs> but yeah, this thing is always always fascinated me more than this, which is why I had to get this thing, especially for when I uh, funded on Indiegogo for $30, and I actually got it, and I was shocked that I got it, to be honest. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it feels exactly the same. Oh, it's actually got power, because you can see it's lighting up. <laughs> yep, yep, it's not going to connect to anything. So let's put that aside. And, uh, oh, damn, this is a long cable. I'm, I probably already have a cable like that, and I forgot all about it. I'm just curious, is it Atari branded? I think I looked that up. No. Oh yeah, it does, it has an Atari logo on it. All right, the classic controller. Now this is interesting, again, underneath is gonna be an extremely long cable. So let's take a look at this. And um, yeah, not bad at all. It does feel really, really, really smooth, like you don't have any grip on it. It feels like it could just slip right out of my hand, to be honest. Um, I don't, I mean, it's really, really smooth texture. <laughs> I don't think I've ever, man, the feel of this thing. I don't think I've ever felt a controller with this type of plastic. And I've never had a Power A controller, so this may be typical for them. But again, we got the two shoulder buttons. We got the two analog triggers back here. This is like, this is pretty much like a uh, Xbox One type of layout. Even the rounded face buttons are a lot like, um, they're a lot like the uh, Xbox buttons, but the D-pad here, this is the th this is the part that is uh, significantly different. It's basically just a circle. I don't know how well that would actually work. I mean, I guess it is okay, but I've never seen... I guess the closest thing I could uh, relate to this is like a Genesis controller is because that was basically a circle. But even then, on top of that, they had more of a D-pad molding. But uh, yeah, I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's very serviceable. And I know you've got the player one through four lights up here. I've seen that before. Atari logo on the top. Yeah, I, I'm going to say it's definitely not bad. I've definitely had worse. All right, the console itself. Again, all the box theming was very similar. Yeah, on the sides, Atari logo, Atari logo. All right, let's open this up. I'll take a look at the console. So, like the first time I'm actually seeing this. Okay, I'm interrupting. I'm recording on my phone now because as I finished the video, I started taking things apart and I started putting things away. I noticed that I missed that when I opened the flap up, underneath the flap, it tells you how to hook everything up. To be honest, right now, right out of the box, uh, my first reaction is this thing is a little bit bigger than I thought it was. For some reason, I was just under the impression this thing was tiny. Let's, let's, I guess we could just pull this up and out. <laughs> And before we pull that out, let's take a look at the accessories here. Uh, this is our HDMI cable, which I don't think, I'd be surprised if this had Atari branding on it. Nope, I didn't think so. 
Uh, we've got our power adapter. And then this is a, um, oh, I guess this goes, you know what? <laughs> no, this is the brick. So I thought that, okay, this plugged directly into the system. No, this plugs into the brick. This is the DC transformer. Then this, it's plugged directly into the system. Okay. And um, let's get this out because this is the curious part. Let's see, stop. Thank you for your Atari VCS purchase. If you have questions or problems with your purchase, please do not return it to the retail store. All right. And then we've got a, ooh, a sticker. Is this a sticker? No, it's, is this a sticker? It feels like a sticker. No, it's just really glossy. It's, it's a thing for Anstream, which I forgot. This has Anstream on it, but here's the thing is you can get Anstream on literally any device these days. I have it on my phone. In fact, I have uh, one of those Razer Kishi uh, adapters I could plug onto my phone and play Anstream on my phone. It could play it on your PC if you want. Um, so having Anstream on this thing is not really that big of a deal. But here's the thing is $39.99 per year. Premium subscription, no ads. Get there. So I, I'm actually pretty impressed with the Anstream service, but I don't, I'm not paying for it. <laughs> So I don't know what you get paying for it that you don't get for free. I mean, that's something I guess I'll have to look into later. But, um, oh, this is nice. This is slick. This is the first time I'm actually seeing this in real life, which is more than I can say about the uh, PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. But, yeah, that is actually, that feels really nice. And I actually, I would have actually preferred the wood grain version of this. But you know, beggars can't be choosers. Are they? Are people calling this the Vader version? <laughs> but um, yeah, pretty interesting. Like, nice rounded corners. It's got this nice feel to it. It's weird. It just feels like this is something other than a computer. It feels like this might be like a Bluetooth speaker. I don't know what else this could be. <laughs> Almost like a, a router. <laughs> but on the back here, power switches on the back. AC adapter, Ethernet, which I, I assume this is Wi-Fi as well. So I'm going to probably not plug this in because I don't think I'm going to have this by a port, but we'll see. HDMI and two USBs on the back. A nice red in the back, too. Kind of almost wish the red was on the front a little bit, like a red trim. I don't know. But it's nice the way it is. And then we got the two USB ports in the front. So I guess you could plug your controllers in and charge them into the system while you play. But there you go. That is, that's pretty much the unboxing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook this up and um, we'll see what's on here. All right, I've just set it up on my desk temporarily here using the same HDMI cable I normally use with the Evercade. I've got the controllers plugged in. Now, when I originally plugged this in, it just turned on automatically, but I shut it off. Um, now I've got the everything all set up. I'm going to hit the power button. It should light up. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And I should start to be getting a signal soon. Let's see. Uh, come on. We're, oh, you know what? I'm, I have it plugged in the wrong... Uh, I have it set on the wrong source. Now we should have a signal. There we go. And... All right. There we go. I do like that startup. All right, I think this is telling me what I have plugged in. So I'm just going to hit the, um, I'm going to use the, the uh, modern controller for right now. It's telling me select, okay. Oh, and I, could, I put this right next, this controller right next to a uh, Xbox One controller. It's like almost exactly the same. Uh, even the uh, the analog sticks themselves have the same ridges on the outside. Once I felt that, I was like, this feels really familiar. <laughs> okay, so we're going to want uh, English. Searching for networks, okay. You're probably not going to see this part. <laughs> All right, we're connecting. Connected, okay, cool. Checking for updates, updates available, installing updates, okay. So yes, um, no surprise really that this needs to update right out of the box. Oh, 
Oh, it's finishing. It's restarting. <laughs> Do I have to hit a button or something? Oh, here we go. I don't know what was going on. I wonder what that was all about. Oh, I'm, I got no signal for whatever reason. Hang on. Okay. I think we're finally ready to get in here. So English again. Wait a minute. Are we doing this again? Okay. We already got the setup. I'm choose my connection. Okay. Wait a minute. Update. Okay. Now it's updating the BIOS. Now it's restarting again. <laughs> Hmm. I can hear the fan going on and off in there. What is that? Oh, I see. what's weird is that's not showing up on my TV. But the Elgato's picking it up. That is weird. And I'm not going to touch anything because I don't want anything to break. Hopefully, we are done updating. I can see we got the Wi-Fi signal in the corner, so it shouldn't be asking me what network connection. Because it should be all set up. Oh, why are you asking me language again? Why are you ask, looking for network again? What are you doing? What in the world? No updates, fine. Thank you. Does it check for updates like this every time you set it up? I don't, that's kind of weird. Okay. What I'm going to do is create a new account. Uh, yeah, everybody view the user and license agreement. Yeah, who sits there and reads all this under TV for real? Okay, I accept it. Whatever. How come there's not a button for not accept it? Ooh, we get to select an icon. Okay. Ooh, I like these icons much better than the choices that you get on the Switch. Oh, look at the Warlord's guy. This, these, these are the best default one. Oh, look, there's the... Is that the guy from Chess? Oh, look, it's the ninja from Ninja Golf. Centipede. Baseball. Golf. Outlaw. There's Adventure. Oh, look at the Atari 400. Sun is fun, but I'd rather be playing Atari. Well, some of these are not that great, but, <laughs> but yeah, we're choosing uh, the guy from Warlords. Next. Oh, my name. Okay. Uh, my name could be changed at any time. You know what? I wonder if I could just plug a keyboard in. Mm-hmm. Ah, it works. Next. Email. Okay, you're not going to see this. My pin. Okay, I need a six-digit pin. All right, when's my birthday? Enter your public bio. This can be changed at any time. This game has ups and downs, but you can never lose focus of your individual goals, and you can't lose. Okay, I, I think I'll, uh, I can type something in here. I guess we'll just do this. This is usually what I put in there, something like this when I don't know what to do. I guess I could have left it blank, but I just looked at a bumper sticker that said that. So that's what it is going to be. Oh, they sent an email to me. <laughs> All right. Activate account. Successfully authorized. Okay. Oh, what the hell is it doing? <laughs> Man, that freaked me out. I was like, what the hell is it? I thought it was doing the, uh, I don't know, when they did the color cycling thing. So firmware upgrade is available for connected devices. Really? Like, like, guess we'll unplug the keyboard and just uh, use a controller because <laughs> I just was curious. Looks like right off the bat, you've got Atari VCS Companion, which is downloading an update. Chrome, okay. Atari VCS Vault and Anstream Arcade. So we're definitely going to try out the VCS Vault and the Anstream Arcade games. Okay, so this is... So I guess home is where you want to put your your main stuff. I guess you have nine you know, boxes to fill in. And then the rest of it is just... Well, there's got to be... It's got to cycle through, I guess, when you fill in nine, then. Maybe the home page does that as well. I don't know. Apps. So we got Chrome PC mode and Atari VCS Companion. That's an app, huh? Okay, there's friends. I know... There's a bunch of people that can uh, that already have an Atari VCS that I can uh, link up with. Wait a minute, why is what is with the one two seven two nine? It just took my name and added a bunch of random numbers to it. System. Oh wait, is it? Um, can the controllers be updated? Yeah, I guess so. Let's update them. That's what the notification I got was. And update that one too. Let's take a look at Anstream Arcade first. Okay, I have an account. Let's see if we can log in. It's been a while since I've logged in. There it is. Okay, got my password. I haven't logged into this in forever. <laughs> got it. You are currently a free tier member. You could use gems to play games. Oh, so that's what it is. So you 
the it's the gems to play the game. That's that's what the deal is. What, what's my messages up here? New tournament available. Oh, look at this. There we go. Okay, let's try this. See what happens. Again, it's just streaming, so. What's funny is I got this through limited run games, and I don't think I've played it so yet. I think I have it on the PS4. Bombfire. Okay. Okay, this, um, well, oddly enough, the uh, analog is working better than the D-pad. Yeah, this, well, it's streaming the game, so really how well it runs really depends on your internet connection. And I've never really had a problem with Anstream, I think, even on my phone. Oh, there I go. Challenge over. I guess it's just until you get blown up. Uh, I just earned that many gems, whatever. 94th place, hooray, okay. And stream seems to work just fine. So let's check out the Atari Vault. And more specifically, I'm more interested in using the classic controller, seeing how well that works. I wonder what the mouse cursor is doing up there. Why is there a mouse cursor up there? Oh, okay, it's because I had the keyboard plugged in, apparently. So how many games are on here? I don't know, but these are all the arcade games. And we got Atari 2600 games. And then the list, okay. So you got arcade games and Atari 2600 games, and that's about it. Okay, here, let's try Breakout. What in the world? How do we start this? Is it because the, the controller's not in the right ports or something? Yep, that was why. Look at it, it even jitters like a real Atari 2600 paddle. But yeah, this might be the only reason I know for sure right now to get a VCS. It's the only modern system that's got a spinner control and it's not bad to be honest i mean granted the bigger ones are better and the ones that i made are better than that when i say the bigger ones i mean the standard ones but this is better than using an analog stick or d-pad this is probably the next best thing to actually using a real paddle controller and you can adjust the sensitivity but i don't know why we're getting jitter what is up with that <laughs> Okay, let's go back. Oh, there's a good one. Actually, I, I, I think this is my favorite Atari 2600 game. Oops. <laughs> but yeah, I never quite got this uh, joystick to work quite right in Stella or in Name. It's not to say that it won't. It's just that I kind of gave up on it before even getting it to work 100% correctly. It recognized it. I just... Just too fiddly. Like, it just didn't want to work exactly the way I needed it to work. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Oh, oops. <laughs> okay, this is what really the Evercade needs to do with the Atari collections. Like, a game select, and it tells you, like, okay, this is the game mode 2. It tells you exactly what it is. So you don't have to, like, look through a manual that they don't even include with the uh, with the package but the jitter why does it jitter warlords let's try this one i'm um, the yellow one. Oh, the green guy just killed himself right off the bat i think the one in the upper right hand corner is always the toughest look at that look at him look at him look at him <laughs> you're gone oh Ooh, yeah i forgot you curve it like that Boom, I win. Okay. Okay, let's check out an arcade game. I wonder if this, how this is going to play. Okay, so they got the AI. I don't know why, but the Evercade version is way stretched out. And it starts immediately after booting. And I'm just going to play this until it... Oh, this is so smooth with it. Ooh, and it vibrates when you lose. But still, this has got some AI programmed in because the original version of Pong... Did not have one player support. I wonder what the score limit is set at. It's either gonna be 11 or 15 or 17 or something like that. Oh yeah, that's right, it's 11. Okay, this is, the game is supposed to end by default at 11. Oh, sprint with analog controls, let's try this. Okay, we'll do that one. Wait, how do I go? Oh, what in the world, why would it? Why was but let me go right away? Why am I going so slow? How do you play this game? <laughs> ah, shift up, shift down. Yeah, okay. 
Not bad looking at all. Yeah, not bad at all. And, um, yep, the other button's a super zapper. Just wanted to test it out. I wouldn't have actually used it at that point. So, if Tempest 4000 uses the dial, even though it's 20 bucks, I might consider getting it. Because it would literally be the only platform you could play the game decently on. Alright, let's leave this. There's a couple things I want to check out as well. The store. Okay, oh, you know, some of these games. So, I wonder, okay... Oh, there's Sydney Hunter, Breakout Recharged. See, a lot of this stuff is just also on Steam. So I'm just curious, there might be stuff on here that's not on Steam. I've never heard of Pedro. I'm just going to take a quick peek. No, I didn't see that. That doesn't appear to be on Steam. I mean, that's not to say you can't get it on PC. It's just not on Steam. Uh, Rally Racers. Uh, yeah, that is on Steam. It's uh, it's $4.40 on Steam. So eh, it's not really that great of a deal here. Sydney Hunter, I think, is on everything. Yep. Uh, same price on Steam. Breakout Recharge, nine dollars. That's probably the same price. Yep. Missile Command Recharge, oh, three ninety nine. Is it? That seems pretty cheap. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> it's three ninety nine here. It's two ninety nine on Steam. I don't know if it's on sale or not, but let's click on it. It's normally two ninety nine. Centipede Recharge, Thrust Lander. Now Tempest four thousand. I have that for Steam, and I went out to play it. I've had it for years, and I went to go play it. Apparently, it only works with a joystick. You can't use the mouse, which makes me not want to play it on Steam. <laughs> but if that works with the spinner on the joystick, that might be worth getting. Gravatar, oh, 2699 cents, okay. Is this not a game that's on the Atari Vault? Look at this, Google Slides, Google Docs, Google, Google Drive, Google Sheets. So that's interesting. Get your Gmail on this thing. Where's Plex? If Plex is on here, this might replace my Plex box. Disc or, oh, look at that. There's Plex. We gotta install this right away. Okay, so there's that's good to know. Internal storage, 20 gigs. So that's something I never really looked into. Is it? Oh, I guess you could just plug in a flash drive or an external hard drive. So Twitch and Hulu. I wonder if YouTube's on here. Ah, it is. Oh, the Atari VCS Companion. I could tell already it's like a phone app. That explains the phone. Thing there. Oh, you could plug a mouse in too. I didn't even think of that. Okay, I can't see that. <laughs> oh, okay. <good. laughs> Chrome, Disney, Netflix. That'll be. S why is net? Why is it so poorly rated? This really does look like an Atari game, like from the '90s. I don't think Thrustlander would be on Steam. Oh, it is. <laughs> why? Why Breakout? Why that separately? That's part of uh, the Atari Vault. These don't seem to be in any particular order. Ooh, Boulder Dash. And now, see, the thing is, though, like, when I see something I'm interested in, I'm looking it up on Steam. Yep, it's on Steam, same price. Oh, this is a free game. Unsung Warriors Prologue. So it's like a demo or something? I mean, I don't see, it's free. I don't see why any reason why not to download it. <laughs> I'm, yeah, it's, okay, it's downloading in the background while I can... Gun Tech, I heard about this one. And I think that one, that is the one I think I've heard about that is only on the VCS. Uh, I'm wrong. It's on Steam. <laughs> and it's $5 cheaper on Steam. It does look interesting, though. Oh, Atari VCS Vault 2. Is it not going to tell us what the <laughs> what the games were? Is this like Joust? I can't tell what's going on in these screenshots. It's on Steam. Spearmaster. It's on Steam. Same price. Okay, now Breakout would be interesting because you can use the dial. Okay, I gotta try it. All right, I'm really interested now. I've, I've been I've been like recording this and messing around with this thing for two hours now. Single player, recharge, classic, classic recharge, okay. We're just gonna do recharge. Wow, that was fast. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? What is going on here? How do I go to settings? Okay, here we go, and controller. Classical rotation, I guess, on? Mouse controls for player. Okay, you can play with the mouse too. Okay, okay, it is working. I don't know why it just wasn't on by default. And I wonder if there's a way to control the sensitivity because this could need to spin a little bit faster. Options. It doesn't seem to be an option for sensitivity. I really got to spin this thing far to get it to move quick. But it is Better than nothing, I suppose. Well, better than digital control. Oh, mortars, that's pretty cool. Whoa. 
I, I, I totally lost where the ball was. <laughs> okay, I'm getting this. I'm getting this. Let's try this classic recharged. I just wish you could adjust the sensitivity on this thing because one like full twist. It seems like I have to rotate more than once in order to get the ball to go. Ooh, I actually saved all three of them. I like the ball speed up and slow down. <laughs> and I know this is on Steam, but still, I wanna, I wanna get some use out of the, the paddle control. You can't. You, I don't know if, if you'd be able to use, do this, use this like this on Steam. Oh, it's showing me where the. That's a pretty damn cool power up. Showing you where the trajectory is. Time work. That is pretty cool. It speeds up, up higher, and slows down closer to the paddle. That is cool. I'm starting to get a little bit of a hang of the uh, twisting the, the joystick. But honestly, there should be there should have been a, a, an adjustment for sensitivity. Yeah, I, I like this. It's definitely worth the 10 bucks I spent. No, this is pretty cool. Let's exit and take a look at that other game that I downloaded. Huh, I don't know what it's doing. This thing has a tendency to like act bizarrely sometimes. For a second, I thought that said, oh, hi, crow. OK, so it scrolls over that way when you load it up. OK, so I guess the home just shows everything you have and uh, but can you change the order of this stuff? Or is it just the in reverse order of how you played? I don't know. Probably doesn't make much sense. Okay, let's take a look at this. This will be the last. Well, I may reorder things in, as I edit the videos because that was kind of all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I'm using the classic controller. Why not? You're 300 BC. Oh, man, there's a story. I just want to play the game. Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> Push up to jump. It's probably not pushing up to jump on... Uh, that's pretty cool. One button uh, shoots arrows and the other button... Oh, crap. Oh, uh, I have to put... No, see, the classic controller doesn't really work well for this because you have to go all the way down to defend. <laughs> I should have just used the uh, the other controller. Went in midair. Oh, so you could double jump. There we go. So that's pretty interesting. I mean, it's... This is... I don't know if this is on Steam or not. I don't think I looked it up, but uh, for free, why not? I guess we can... Oh, see, it's respawning because I think I have to put a box on every single one of these triggers. Oh, actually, two boxes and then me. Do I have infinite arrows, I guess? Um, I guess... N no? Ooh. Yeah, he killed me. Okay. Okay, let's get on to this Atari VCS companion. So I see that all this does is pull up this image. I could have probably searched for it. So I bet you this this app is just this one image. Enter. Okay, so I just email ID. So I'm guessing this is my PIN number. That, uh, what the hell is my email ID? I know what my PIN is. Why isn't it um, accepting it? Let's try this again. Why won't the launch button highlight? Okay, I gotta search this, just because it makes no sense. Good, this app has a rating of 3.7. The app doesn't even accept my ID, which isn't hard to input, it just seems hard for the app to accept. <laughs> I type in the number. Okay, to give you an idea what I'm looking at here, I type in my PIN number, and the launch button is grayed out, but, <laughs> but when I put in the number, it never highlights like I can hit it. I can hit, if I hit reset pin, let's just try that. I guess we'll try resetting the pin. I have to enter in my email. Something went wrong. Yep, not working. Okay, well, I guess we'll try that another day. But that just means that I can't really uh, try out YouTube or anything. Oh, okay, see, that doesn't make any sense. Ah! <laughs> okay, I knew that it was didn't know my email, but it's the interface. <sighs> Believable. There we go. <laughs> Oops. Oh, that's right. I need to uh, switch back to Wi-Fi. Okay, searching for a VCS. Welcome to the VCS Companion. All right. Access your profile, adjust your mouse sensitivity. 
I like I it's telling me every single little button. I think I'm uh, controlling it, but it's just taking me through a tutorial. There's a trackpad. I, you know, this is all stuff I could figure out. Ah, there we go. We're finally controlling it with the phone. So now we could test out a couple other things. Launch flex. See if we could get this set up. Yeah, this could totally replace my uh my ra I have a Razplex, and I, that's what I've been using for years and years and years. But if I could swap in the Atari VCS with the, the, the Razplex, I could use that Raspberry Pi for something else. That's weird. Apparently, that's not the right website anymore. It's not HTTPS. That didn't work. I had to put in www. That is weird. Okay, uh, continue. There we go. Now we got my stuff on my server here. Um, let's go to library. wonder why I'm not getting the images. Maybe it just has to wait. Mystery Science Theater. I guess we'll pick a season six episode. It's in the middle of this episode. Let's continue. Their planes are giggling at it. It works. <laughs> Not bad. That's so uh, if we could figure out the image issue, I wonder why it's got the overlay still on there. Is that going to disappear? But we'll have to mess around with this more. I mean, it, it's working to a certain extent. Oh, now it's gone. That's weird. I wonder why it's stuck on the screen before. OK, so now it's not being able to handle the HD stuff. Huh, and it's not working. Yeah, I mean, that was something I was interested in, but is there a way to... No, I didn't want to... No. Oh, my images are there now. Okay. Now, is this working properly? Is it, was it just not working because it was busy loading up all these images? No, it still doesn't work. <laughs> let's try something... Well, let's... Well, again, let's try something easier. Everything from season... 10 and before that should be work fine because that's standard Space definition children. yep yep okay i mean if this can't play high definition stuff then it's totally useless to me well that works what is the difference between that and my mystery science theater that's interesting okay you know what i'm gonna those were mkv files but the previous season is mp4 no um Season 11. Yeah, okay, it's fine. It just doesn't like the MK MKV files. Let me check in on another season. Okay, season 10. Can it play season 10? Because that's MKV again. No, that's fine. The ones I just did for season 13. Those are, I know, are MP4. I guess the thing is if, is if uh, I could use this, it's just that if it doesn't work, I have to convert the file. I well, it works. It's only season 12? <laughs> huh, strange. Okay, because this is high definition. It's also MKV. Okay, what's the deal with that one season then? Maybe it, I'm, I'm going to try every single... There's only six episodes in that season. Maybe it's only one of them. Oh, that one works. No, that one doesn't work. Okay, that is weird. But I know they work on my other devices, so that's kind of strange. I think I've messed around with this. I think I will replace this with the Razplex. And if I run across any issues, this is no problem for me to adapt and convert the files that need be. But yeah, I think we'll put a place on the shelf for this. All right, let's check out. I'm not going to sign it to Netflix. I'm just going to assume that works. PC mode. The Atari VCS allows you to boot to a new operating system when starting. To boot a new OS, plug in a USB thumb drive containing a bootable version of your preferred OS, then press A to restart. Okay, uh, ads. Oh, it looks like I have to use a mouse or the companion. Like, okay, yeah, I guess you can't even use a controller at all. I can't just control YouTube with the, the joystick. If you think I'd be able to go up and down and everything, that's how it's being, it's controlled in, uh, like, Roku boxes and stuff. Hey, look at that. So let's see if we can't sign in. Okay. The scroll wheel's a nice touch, but I don't like having to take my finger off the trackpad to hit a button. Should be able to tap it like you could do on a regular laptop. But there we go. It's that seems to be working just fine, actually. And sometimes it's choppy, sometimes it's not. So that seems to be acceptable. This video in particular. Okay, YouTube works. All right, got the Evercade VS booting up here. Got the controller plugged into it. Let's see. It's not working right off the bat. Oh, it, it, it see it recognizes it. But this thing has a really goofy tendency to recognize it here, but not work, actually. <laughs> Up, down, left, right, A, B, X, Y. And I really had a feeling like this would work because it recognized the classic controller. I may have to retest the classic controller, too. Because even though that seemed to map properly. And the center. It's all mapped. 
apply. Okay. Okay, works just fine here. Let's see, what can we try out? El Viento. Let's see if it actually works in the game. Because that's another thing, is like you can all map it up and it works fine in the menus and then it doesn't work in the game. Start button doesn't seem to work. Well, that is weird. It doesn't seem like it can actually start the game. And the home button's not working. <laughs> so, no, it, it's not 100% working. Anyway, it was worth a try, and I'm not going to try the classic controller because I know that doesn't really work properly. So, unless they updated it, so I guess I will try it out. Yeah, it's the same thing. Oh, except the home button actually works. Oh, no, this works. Um, but there's a third button. <laughs> I, I don't have my third button option. I can only throw magic and oh, unless I, I could swap the controls around. So I have jump and magic. Yeah, I guess we could swap it out to that. And then I, I don't have a third button. <laughs> so it kind of works. I think I've been messing around with this for far too long. You get my idea. All right, I think I'm going to end it there. I've been actually messing around with this thing for over two hours after the unboxing. And I think I got a pretty good idea of what I see there. It's pretty much exactly what I expected. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's on here is already on available any somewhere else, especially Steam. And if you've got a computer, then there really is no reason to have this thing unless you just want a separate device to hook up to a separate television in a living room and play the games there. But you could do that with a PC, too, to be honest. <laughs> I do like it just because of the the spinner on the joystick. So I think anything that I'm going to buy in the store is just going to be solely because of the spinner. So I will probably buy Tempest 4000 one day. How long has this thing been out? And things are kind of janky on it. Like things stutter, they freeze up. It doesn't feel like this has been finely tuned. It doesn't feel as solid as like a, a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One. This really does feel like a PC in a box with a with a, a wrapper over it. Yeah, there's a lot of tools that go with it. And when it works, it's great. But uh, often it just seems like sometimes things don't work or there's buttons in places where you don't expect them. For a hundred bucks, I don't regret buying it. But man, if I had paid four hundred dollars for this thing, I think I would have been disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think I can re use this to replace Plex and even Plex doesn't even work 100%. This is the only device that doesn't play all of the videos that I have on my server. For whatever reason, it just didn't like those few episodes. And I, I don't know why, but I could easily convert them to something this can look at. I mean, I could play those episodes just fine on my phone. It's playing right now. <laughs> it just wouldn't play on, on this for whatever reason. I don't know why. All that being said, I am going to take off now. So thanks for watching. See you all next time.